Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Three shot two fatally in Gregory Park. Two men were gone down and another injured in Gregory Park, St. Catherine, on Saturday night. The deceased have been identified as Cedric Crooks, 46, also known as Gungo, and 47-year-old Michael Manley, also known as Badabado, both of Gregory Park addresses. Reports are that three men were at a bar in the area when they were pounced upon by a lone gunman who opened fire at them. Crooks and Manley reportedly both received gunshots to the head. The other man was shot in the chest. The suspect escaped in the area on foot. The police were summoned and the men were taken to hospital, where Crooks and Manley were pronounced dead. The other man was admitted in serious but stable condition. The police have not yet released a motive for the killing. Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips says, Lawmen have maintained a strong presence in the area and are disappointed that this incident has occurred. We will not allow criminals to disrupt the peace for the rest of the year, especially those that are looking forward to a peaceful Christmas, he told reporters. Rough sea and during search for woman in Robins Bay boat disaster. Rough weather conditions are frustrating efforts to resume the search for a woman who is missing after a boat on which she was aboard capsized off the coast of Robins Bay in St. Mary on Saturday. Five other persons along with the boat owner who were in the vessel have been accounted for. The Marine Police, a Jamaica Defense Force JDF Coast Guard boat and a helicopter were forced to abandon their search yesterday because of the high winds and choppy seas. Member of Parliament for St. Mary Central, Dr. Maurice Guy, said that at least six persons were on the boat. I don't have all the details, but I understand that six people requested a boat ride and the vessel capsized some time later, he told reporters. It is really a very, very sad incident, and the JDF Coast Guard, a JDF helicopter, and a marine police had to abandon the search for the missing young lady due to the bad weather condition, he stated. The six persons were reportedly among guests attending a function in Strawberry Feast in Robin Hills Bay. Trial this week for a lawsuit over alleged illegal traffic tickets. A lawsuit that could result in taxpayers repaying hundreds of billions of dollars for allegedly illegal traffic tickets issued over a 15-year period is set to be heard by the Constitutional Court on Wednesday. Maurice Hudson, who is the software engineer, sued the state in 2021 for alleged breaches of his constitutional rights over a $5,000 ticket issued to him by the police on July 5th that year for a speeding violation. He is contending that the ticket was illegal because of legislative missteps in the process used to increase fines for traffic offences. The trial will be heard by a panel of three judges comprising Justice Dale Palmer, Carl Barnaby and Tara Carr. The matter is scheduled to start at 10 a.m. Maurice contends that at the time the ticket was issued, fines or fixed penalties for traffic offences under the 1938 Road Traffic Act RTA, were not increased by the legislator or the Ministry of Transport as mandated in Section 116 of the RTA. Instead, the fines were purportedly increased by then Finance Minister Dr. Omar Davis in 2006 and 2007 as if they were taxes or dues under the Provisional Collection of Tax Act, he asserted. The Minister of Finance has no power or authority to increase fines or fix penalties under the Road Traffic Act, the software engineer argued, through his attorney, Jamar Clark and Matthew Royal for the law firm Myers, Fletcher and Garden. Morris' lawsuit seek, among other things, an order for the government to refund motorists who, he contends, were illegally fined over the 15-year period ending in 2021, and a declaration that his constitutional rights to due process were breached by the imposition of the illegal penalties. Sunshine Girl Savage 5th Place at Fast 5 Jamaica's Sunshine Girl rallied from the third quarter deficit to beat Malawi 36-31 in the 5th place playoff as the Fast 5 World Series came to an end at the Christchurch Arena in Christchurch, New Zealand Saturday night, Jamaica time. The win snapped a three-game losing skid from the team that has started the two-day event with back-to-back -back wins as they marginally improved on last year's results, which they lost all the games they played. Australia retained their title after beating New Zealand 35-23 in the final with England beat South Africa 30-22 in the third-place playoff. Nambia, who lost all their games, led Jamaica 10-5 by the end of the first quarter, but the Sunshine Girls rallied back a big second quarter to lead by a goal of 16-15 at the halftime and increased their advantage to 29-26 at the end of the third quarter. KPH CEO 
disputes claims of cancer patients neglect. According to CEO of Kingston Public Hospital KPH, Dr. Natalie Whiteley has disputed claims of ill treatment and neglect made by family members of cancer patient Renisha Towson. Dr. Whiteley told reporters that she made aware she was made aware of the allegations through a video making its run on various social media platforms where thousand families voiced their discontent with the quality of treatment they say is being given to their loved one. Thousand, a 27-year-old of three, is currently battling stage 4 breast cancer and has been admitted to KPH. On Monday, Thousand's sister Shanice told reporters that her family believes the health professionals at KPH has given up on her. We had her at UWI University Hospital of the West Indies first, and she didn't like the treatment, so we moved her to KPH. Each time she comes here, they keep her the most three days, and then they send her back home. It was a night we have to jump up and bring her back to hospital because the breast is bleeding, Shani said on Monday. She also stated that Towson was brought to KPH on Monday morning to have her wound dressed, and she was rushed back to hospital in the afternoon as she complained about trouble breathing. That, Shani said, was when they encountered difficulties with the staff at KPH as her sister was in their need of oxygen but was told that none was available where she was being treated at the time. She alleged that family members had to wheel the patient around the hospital as there were also no porters available to help with transport. Noting that the allegations were of grave concern, Dr. Whitey said that an investigation was subsequently launched into the matter. It was brought to my attention by several people because the Ministry of Health and Wellness does have a complaints policy and she complains come to via Vista different means, Dr. Whitey stated. The acting CEO added, as part of the policy, it is incumbent on me as the chief executive officer to investigate. So when the complaint came in, it was grave concern to me and I immediately asked the senior medical officer of the hospital and the director of the nursing services to investigate and provide a report. Dr. Whitey told reporters that while she could not share the details of the investigation, she was satisfied that the staff at the KPH was providing the best care to the patient. I am not going to be able to speak on the details of the investigation because it would require me to give confidential medical information. But the matter has been investigated. The senior medical officer and consultant with responsibility for care were already involved and are involved. When I look at the investigation, I am quite satisfied that she is indeed getting the care that she needs at this time in light with her clinical condition, Dr. Whitey stated. I am quite satisfied not just as a CEO but as a medical doctor myself because the standard of care that she's getting is within acceptable standards for her medical condition, she continued. At the same time, Dr. Whiteley said that the medical staff has also sought to reassure Towson of their commitment to assist her during this difficult diagnosis. The complaint mechanism really requires us to speak to the complainant and at this time, we were able to speak directly to our patient to reassure her and just to ensure that the cure that she needs at this time continues at the Kingston Public Hospital, the acting CEO stated. Acknowledging that family members were also affected by cancer diagnosis, Dr. Whitey said the emotions experienced by the loved ones of patients were valid and the health professionals are determined to do their jobs to the best of their ability. I can say that it is very difficult because a cancer diagnosis brings a lot of emotion and we really have to ensure that the cure is extended not just to the patient but you have loved ones who are also impacted by this and what is happening to their loved ones, she explained. Sometimes because of emotions, there are many perceptions, and that's part of the process of caring for people, especially those who have cancer, a very difficult diagnosis. But each patient treatment is individualized, and certainly the Kingston Public Hospital does not requisite specialists to maintain and to continue the care of the patient needs, Dr. Whitley reported. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.